Today we're going to learn how to swear like the British. Lovely. But if you're a bit sensitive and swearing's not your thing, simply cover your ears. Hello, I'm Kate and this is Anglophenia. Now there are loads of swear words that us Brits use, like blimey, sodding, bloody and for goodness sake, I probably shouldn't use the word I was going to there. OK, let's start with bloody, as in, what a bloody mess we've gotten ourselves into, Geoffrey, or stop bloody swearing. There is more than one theory as to how the word bloody came into the English language. Some say it came from the rowdy, aristocratic youths of the 17th and early 18th centuries who were known as bloods and were often very drunk. Hence the phrase bloody drunk, shortened from as drunk as a blood. It is also said that bloody is a direct translation of the German word blutig and was brought back at the end of the 16th century by Englishmen fighting in the Low Countries and was used in the same way, to add emphasis to words. Bloody had been a fairly normal everyday word up until the 1750s when it started to be considered a swear word and became unprintable owing to a mistaken belief that it referenced the blood of Christ and was blasphemous. During Victorian times, the word bloody was deemed offensive amongst the higher classes, as it was more commonly used by the poor. As a result, several other words were used to replace it, including blimey, blasted, bleeding, blinking, blinding, blooming and blessed, which incidentally were also the rejected names of the Seven Dwarfs. It's true. My favourite swear word is bollocks, which is a modern version of the Anglo-Saxon word ballocks, which had the same meaning. Bollocks is a very versatile word. It can be used if something goes wrong. I've run out of milk. Bollocks. It can be used to suggest that somebody might be telling a lie. Um, we've run out of milk. Bollocks, I can see you hiding it behind your back. It can also mean that something is amazing. Mm-mm, this milk is so tasty. It's the bollocks. And to give someone a bollocking is to tell them off. I got a right bollocking from my mum for drinking all the milk. But if something is the best of the best, it's the dog's bollocks, which is why I now feel even more guilty about getting snowy neutered. The origins of this phrase are rather vague, although my favourite theory suggests that it comes from the phrase it sticks out like the dog's bollocks, meaning something which is obvious and therefore clearly stands out from the rest. Or in my humble opinion, it could just boil down to the sheer enthusiasm a dog has for its own bollocks. Now there is often some confusion between the Americans and the Brits when it comes to the word pissed. In the US it can generally mean that someone is angry, whereas in the UK it can mean so, so much more. Allow me to elaborate. To be pissed means to be drunk. To be on the piss means to be out, getting drunk. Telling someone to piss oh. off means they should go away, but to be pissed off has the same meaning as it does in America, which is to be annoyed with someone. To piss about is to be silly or mess around, and to take the piss out of someone is to make fun of or tease them. I'm proper pissed off with Paul for going out on the piss with Peter and Pablo, getting pissed in the pub and then pissing around until past his bedtime. I have to tell him to piss off when he comes home pissed and it's impossible not to take the piss out of him the next morning. Got it? Good. Next up, it's sod. Now a piece of sod is commonly known as a piece of soil with grass on it, but like bollocks, it's a rather versatile curse word. Team it with off and you can tell someone to go away, as in, Will you just sod off? A person can also be a sod, as in, that inconsiderate sod nearly revealed the ending of Game of Thrones season four. Oh. Sodding can be used to add emphasis to a word, generally to negative effect, as in, has anyone seen my sodding glasses? Sod it is an exclamation of frustration and is often used instead of stronger, more offensive words. Sod all means hardly anything, a bit like when the Brits leave a tip in a restaurant. It's usually sod all. Sod's law is the rule that when something can go wrong, it will. It's a drearier, more pessimistic and generally less upbeat version of the American Murphy's Law. Well, what did you expect from us Brits? A cheery, sunny outlook on misfortune? Yeah, it's never gonna happen. But when Sod's law graces you with a heap of well-timed bad luck, you now have a plethora of new profanities to shout. You could even say them in a British accent. So go on, swear like the British. Swearing has been scientifically proven to ease pain and can even help people bond. So with that in mind, you should probably sod off. But said with hugs. And before you do, why not let us know your favourite British swear words in the comments. And subscribe for more episodes. You can tweet us at Anglophenia and follow us on Facebook too. 
Ooh, this one is flipping brilliant. I swear you're gonna love that one. Oh, that one is f***ing amazing.